Vettel Alonso Piastri, who say with summer break. We've got three big news today. Vettel retirement from Formula One that came in Budapest. Alonso signing for Aston Martin. It's only the beginning because there's some Alpine story, Alpine announces that Oscar Piastri is going to drive for them. Oscar Piastri goes on Twitter saying that he hasn't signed anything with Alpine. We've got McLaren that has a second seat available. I mean, we are on to a pretty exciting summer break. Here we go. First part is about Vettel. As you may know, Sebastian Vettel is one of the greatest Formula 1 drivers of all time. If you don't know, make sure that you click on the video that I've made about the top 10 drivers, Formula 1 drivers of all time. I had the chance to race against him. He's an incredible driver, he's an incredible person. And I would like to talk about three points about Vettel. The first one being paid tribute to his greatest moment of his career. So. Sebastian Vettel is one of the most successful Formula 1 racing drivers, was four-time world champion between 2010 and 2013. In the history of Formula 1, only Fangio and Michael Schumacher were four-time world champion in a row. Vettel is the youngest Formula 1 world champion of all time, he's the third driver with the most victories of all time, 53 and third most podium finishes of all time with 122 podiums and fourth of all time for most pole position with 57. I mean those numbers speak for themselves. Pretty crazy to know that uh, Sebastian in a very short time because that was basically from 2008 his first win and then 2010 with Red Bull to 2013 and then some with Ferrari later. So if you remember back 2007, 15 years ago, Sebastian Vettel was called by BMW Sauber to replace Robert Kubica that had a big crash to the Canadian Grand Prix and was not allowed to race at the US Grand Prix. And Sebastian from his first Grand Prix looked like he had everything under control, um, like it wasn't new for him. But on top of the performance, what I remember watching, it was just like, it was super calm. It was super calm for his first time in Formula One. And that amazed me back then. The year after, it went to uh, Toro Rosso, 2008, and even though the four first races went bad, I believe he had three, three times on the first lap, when uh, arrived Monza, Monza 2008. It was a very wet weekend, and Sebastian Vettel won the Grand Prix for Toro Rosso, and that was an incredible performance, incredible achievement. No one was expecting Toro Rosso to win a race, and I remember seeing him flying under the rain and jumping the curbs and, and just having master control of the car. That was 2008. Then obviously he went to Red Bull, had that incredible series of uh, four world championship in a row fighting uh, with the top guys like Alonso. Then after Red Bull, 2014 was a tough year for Red Bull. Sebastian Vettel, a new teammate, Daniel Ricciardo. I believe the car didn't really fit Sebastian, so he went to Ferrari. He became Lewis' worst enemy. He was uh, very competitive, which is very impressive. He was there pushing the limit, trying to always go and, and fight Mercedes. That was very dominating at the time. And uh, for a lot of years, he was the only one trying to be uh, to challenge Lewis Hamilton for the World Championship. So I really enjoyed those years. Obviously, I was, I was close to him with Haas and the link that we had with Ferrari. But definitely those years, you know, even though we can say that he did never won the, the, the championship with Ferrari, it's absolutely incredible. And then he went to Aston Martin for a fresh new challenge. I believe the first year went pretty well. 2022 just the car isn't great so it's a bit of a shame to see Sebastian you know out in Q1 such a great driver but it shows you how much you depend on the car you know you can be at the top but if your car isn't good you are at the bottom from his body language we could kind of tell that Sebastian was was going to retire I thought that he was going to retire his last year after his last year at Ferrari because it looked like he was kind of tired of all the, the duties and the travel but also in the GPDA the Grand Prix Driver Association he was super involved so it was like mixed feeling and I believe Aston Martin was a fresh start for him and he was going to go somewhere and have something new uh, which he had in the first year and that year just was was the one where the car wasn't working enough and I, I believe he just he just had enough so um, he's, he's off what are his plans I don't know I'm sure he can drive anywhere he wants to but does he want to you know keep traveling does he want some quiet time have some fun I don't know. Second part is the third, well, the memories of the greatest moment of Sebastian. There, there are a lot of memories that I have with Sebastian. Obviously, the first one is Monza 2008. That win for Toroso, that's something very special um, that he did that day and, and absolutely 
stunning. Another souvenir that I have is when he won the Indian Grand Prix in 2013, which was actually his last world championship. I was third on the podium, Nico Rosberg was second, and I actually celebrated the world championship of Sebastian with him on the podium. And that was, that was a really cool moment. I was very happy to stand on that podium to um, lift off Sebastian as a world champion. I would say that the third memory is not a very good one, but Germany 2018 when Sebastian crashed out of the lead in, at the German Grand Prix under tricky, very tricky condition. And you could tell he was, you know, he was banging on his wheel. You could tell he was still into it and, and absolutely wanted to try to be a world champion that year and win his own race. After that, I just felt like, you know, as I say, I felt like he, he kind of had enough, at least in his body language. Yes, Formula One is absolutely incredible, but Formula One drains you. You know, he's traveling the world 20, 22, 23 times per year, jet lag all over the place, far away from your family and your kids. It is an incredible job, don't get me wrong, and I was very lucky to do it for 10 years, but it's also a job that takes a lot out of you, and, and it's, you know, you be, it's selfish. Sport is selfish, it's not the athletes that are selfish, it's sport, because it requires you to be all over the place, around the world, focused on, on what you have to do, recover, uh, to get the full energy. So when retirement time comes, you actually realize that you can have a lot of fun and spend a lot of time with your family. Well, the third part was my opinion on his retirement. I guess I kind of gave you already an idea. I felt like he, he has accomplished more than a lot of drivers will ever do. He's, he's in the top 10 of the greatest Formula One drivers of all time. Does he want to do more? Does he want to do different? Does he want to do NASCAR, IndyCar, Rally Car, Dakar, Le Mans? I don't know. He will know inside him what he wants to do and not. That's the most important for him, you know, he's, he's dedicated 15 years to Formula One, which which is incredible. He's just gonna do what he wants to be happy. And, and that's that's one of the most important things in life. All right, now on to Fernando Alonso, the 25 years old man. Fernando is 41 years old. Imagine he started in Australia 2001. That is 21 years ago. Fernando is 347 Grand Prix. He could have, he's been racing so much in Formula One that he could have been around the, the hearse 2.3 times. He's a quarter of the way from the hearse to the moon, just driving distance in Formula One. How incredible is that? And yet, you watch Fernando Alonso in every practice session qualifying race. He does races like a 20 years old driver. I mean, I love that passion, that dedication that he's got for the racing. That's absolutely incredible. Starting with Minardi, went to Renault, Ferrari, McLaren, back to sort of Renault with Alpine and no Aston Martin. So that was a bit of a shock move, I must say. I don't think Alpine was expecting it. Told them that, um, well, I do, I'm Fernando Alonso and I do whatever I want. Good for him, he deserves it. I mean, he's, he's an incredible driver. He's got an incredible charisma, an incredible career, twice world champion. If we look at his stats, they're not, they're not the greatest. Out of 347 Grand Prix, he's 32 wins. 301 Grand Prix, Lewis has 103 wins. So, you know, if you look at the stats, they're not, they're not there, especially for Fernando. But, you know, when he was at Renault, it was absolutely incredible. He went to Ferrari, they had a tough time, so he couldn't really achieve what he wanted. He went to McLaren and, and they had issue with the power unit and he wasn't very happy with it. But then went to Le Mans, won Le Mans 24 hours, competed in the Indy 500 and did incredibly well. So wherever Fernando goes, Fernando is fast. Uh, and as I say, at 41 years old, he still has that energy and dedication of a 20 years old driver and i love that and you see it in the way he moves and the way he practices and he slides the car and he's he just he just loves it and and it's so cool to see someone like that just just being out there and being happy to be in formula one wants to stay longer has an incredible contract with aston martin my only hope here is that aston martin comes back a little bit stronger next year because i don't want to see a frustrated fernando alonso i want to see a fernando alonso that is able to compete at the front able to give us that thrill like the canadian grand prix qualifying where he almost went for pole those moments that uh, that a magical moment fernando can create when you sit on your sofa you're almost like jumping all over the place like come on come on fernando do it I I threw hope that with Aston Martin that's gonna work well for him. Which brings us to the third big news of the summer break, and we're only two days into the summer break. It's Oscar Piastri. If I'm being honest, the first kind of time that I heard about Oscar Piastri was in Formula 3. He was fighting with Logan Sargent and Theo Porcher, the Frenchman and the American driver. And I thought like he was good, but maybe maybe the Sargent or Porcher were a bit better than him. The year after in Formula 2, he 
completely, I realized that I was completely wrong and that it, it was very special. In Formula 2, he just dominated it. Absolutely perfect season, fast, consistent, precise, absolutely incredible 